Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss generator pole slip protection. So to start with pole slip protection, we will uh, discuss about the impacts impacts of pole slip condition. As I explained in the last video, the pole slip means losing synchronism. The generator rotor it accelerates and it overspeeds and it loses synchronism with the grid. Due to overspeed, the frequency generated at the terminal voltage it is higher than the desired one, and that uh, voltage it is injected into the grid, so the grid voltage will also get affected, and the other uh, generators which are connected with the same grid they will sense that frequency, and accordingly their governor will act, and their speed or will also get disturbed. So it is better. Uh, to isolate as soon as possible the faulty generators to avoid blackout condition means if we will not isolate our generator which is experiencing the center of the power swing then this disturbance it will propagate to the other power stations and after some time all the power station they will collapse and they will result into a blackout condition which is very very dangerous condition for the grid so to prevent that dangerous blackout condition this pole slip protection it is present in the protection relay of the generator and how it works that I will explain uh, here voltage transformer and current transformer at the terminal of the generator these two transformers they are present this sends voltage and current the voltage transformer it sends voltage and the current transformer it sends current and this voltage and current they are fed into the protection relay device ok it is present in the generator relay panel from this voltage and current the generator relay it will calculate the impedance what is impedance impedance is nothing but summation of resistance and reactance it will calculate the impedance and if that impedance enters the locus of pole slip protection and it will stay in the locus for a particular period of time and it will come out of the locus then it will count it as a slip and if the number of slips experienced by the relay if it is more than the setting then the relay will issue a trip command so this is how pole slip protection operates and I will explain this in details. So what is the locus of pole slip protection? The locus of the pole slip protection just look looks like this. It is having three parts. One is blinder, number two is lens, number three is reactance line. This part is called the blinder part. Lens you can uh, easily able to recognize this is lens and reactance line this is the reactance line so I can say this is number one blinder this is number two lens and this is number three reactance line clear so this blinder what it represents it represents the impedance of three parts generator GT and grid as it crosses through origin this origin is nothing but this is the terminal point of the generator at this point the relay it sends two, uh, two kinds of impedance one is forward impedance forward means after this real after this sensing and number two is backward impedance means before this sensing so the backward part is the generator part forward part is forward part are GT and grid so at here if the relay will sense impedance the forward part it will sense GT impedance and grid impedance and in the backward part it, is, it will only sense generator impedance 
and the intersection of gt and grid impedance at this point if we will draw a line this line is called as reactance line this reactance line it divides the lens into two important parts one is external zone another is internal zone means above this line the zone is known as external and below this line the zone is known as internal means if the center of the swing it is present inside our power station or inside the gtu system of our power station then the swings experienced by the generator uh, they should follow the trajectory below this line like this and if the swing center is outside our power station the trajectory will be like this as shown in this picture so this is uh, a typical internal swing you can see here this is a typical internal swing like this swings are occurring here and this is a typical external swing so what is the basic difference between internal and external swing in external swing the generator terminal voltage it remains healthy but in internal swing the generator terminal voltage it starts fluctuating or it starts falling down why it starts falling down because whenever there is some line fault or there is some huge fault inside our power station at that time our excitation system the duty of the excitation system is to maintain voltage at the terminal of all the generators if our excitation system is good enough then it it is definitely going to maintain the healthy voltage across the terminal but if it is not cap due to heavy fault current if it is not capable of maintaining voltage then we will experience a trajectory like this and if it is able to maintain voltage then the trajectory will be a little different the trajectory will be the perpendicular bisector to this blinder perpendicular bisector just i am drawing here as this is a perpendicular bisector if our excitation system is strong enough to maintain the terminal voltage just equal to the grid then our swing will follow this path like this but if our excitation system is weak and our generator voltage is uh, getting collapsed at that time we will experience uh, this kind of swing now what is the angle between generator and grid voltage this is delta so this angle is delta or we can say load angle in the last video i have explained at somewhere at this point generator loses the synchronism if this point is 90 degree and this point point is 180 degree so i i can explain at this point the load angle is going to be 180 degree so during swing suppose the locus follows this trajectory like this the moment it reaches this point we will say the load angle is 180 degree and when it crosses this line we will say now the generator is acting like a motor okay so at the right side we are having generating mode and at the left side we are having motoring mode and when it touches this lens we will say it is getting very close to this angle this critical clearing angle suppose this angle is uh, 170 degree we have to set our relay just little lesser than this so this angle we generally set as 120 degree okay so if i will draw a lens here i will show you three swings one is this one is this another one is this perpendicular bisector now try to understand from this point this angle is 120 degree 
from this point this angle is 120 degree and from this point this angle is 120 degree so the locus of lens is nothing but these are the collection of all the possible trajectories where the angle is going to be 120 degree which is set marginally closer to the loss of synchronism condition ok so when our locus of operating point is here in a normal healthy condition and suddenly if it will jump into this lens then now the question is relay will operate it will issue a trip command or not it will not issue a trip command because only entering into this locus is not sufficient the logics behind the protection relay I will explain there are two zones uh, four zones R1 R2 R3 and R4 the relay has to cross this all four zones means it has to come from R1 to R2 then from R2 to R3 then from R3 to R4 so if relay will travel from R1 to R2 to R3 to R4 and it has to stay in R2 for a certain period of time this is also mandatory and it has to also stay in R3 for a certain period of time if it is following all these conditions then the relay will count it as one slip if it, it will travel this much of segments of the characteristics then it will be a one slip and inside relay there are settings we have to set the number of slips and if the slips counted by the relay just become equal to the setting which are set in the relay then only it will issue a trip command suppose we have set number of slip equals to 2 then it will detect 2 slips to operate the relay suppose one slip will be from R1 to R2, R2 to R3 then R4 another slip will be like this to and fro another slip will be R4 to R3 R3 to R2 and then R1 then the counter of the relay it will detect yes the number of slips are 2 which are just equal to the settings and it will issue a trip command so this is how the relay detect pole slip and it operates this is the logic behind the protection relay now the question is relay can also distinguish the center of the swing yes it can distinguish how it will distinguish it will distinguish from the reactance line and these settings are also divided into now two parts internal slip setting and external slip setting now the question is whether it is recommended to trip in external slip or not I will say it is not recommended at all only you have to trip the generator in internal slip and the external slips you can also keep it as alarm purpose only so why it is not required that I can elaborate in the next page so that you will be clear suppose this is a power station having two generators G1, G2 switch yard and it is delivering power to a grid and this is another power station having uh, three generators say G3, G4 and G5 this is their GT their switch yard and it is also connected to the grid to this TR line, transmission line now in every generator there is individual protection function for pole slip ok suppose there is a heavy line to ground fault here LG fault here now how the relays will respond I will explain so this diagram 
the relays present in this power station they will respond this fault the reactance line as external slip like this the locus of the operating point will swing but it will follow this trajectory means above reactance line and here as the fault is very close to the gt it will experience a swing like this if the excitation system is stable then the swing might be like this or like this it depends now in this condition suppose here the internal slip setting is equal to 2 and external slip setting is equal to 5 here the internal slip setting is equal to 2 external slip setting is equal to 5 so the moment it will sense five number of slip it will issue alarm but it will not trip but here the moment it will sense two slips means 1 and 2 it will issue a trip command to the generators where they are detected suppose if it is detected in g3 g4 then both the generators they will trip okay suppose it is detected in all the three generators then all the three generators will trip so these three generators trip to safeguard these two generators because if these three will not trip after some time this external swings will create a problem here okay it will try to disturb the frequency of this adjacent drives present in the power plant and all the consumers connected to this grid okay so this is a very very critical protection we have discussed just now and i hope uh, i am able to uh, make you familiar about the pole slip protection phenomenon and the characteristic part with this i will conclude Thank you and have a nice day.